What's going on everybody? This is Sam Carlson, right-handed pitcher in the Seattle Mariners organization. Make sure you tune in to my live interview with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Hey, what's up? My name's Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Hey everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco. On Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are listening to Live on Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Whether you're listening on the iOS or Android app, tuning in on Alexa, or even on the Power 98.5 satellite radio website, we are here to offer you the best in entertainment, sports, news, and everything else they won't talk about in mainstream media. We've got Sam Carlson. You all know him. You've seen the video. You've seen the promo. You've got the notifications. He is an American professional baseball pitcher in the Seattle Mariners organization. Uh, you know, we're going to be going, you know, really into finding out more about, you know, what Sam is doing, upcoming projects. He has really good interviews out there. But we're going to go, as you all know, in a different direction because we really want to get to the root and to the, the nucleus of, of what makes these professionals, whether you're a film director, producer, you're in sports, television, um, even in being an author and a creative director within your life and within your career, your narrative, your context is what's most important here on Power 98.5. And it's what we highlight the most, whether it be on Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni Catherine and Company with Catherine Swain, and here with myself, live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Sam, welcome to the show. Welcome to the station. Stephen, I appreciate you having me. You're, Can't wait. <laughs> you're welcome, and, and you deserve it. And, you know, you, you've got a, a, a lot of dialogue um, that you've shared within your life. You started with the Major League in 2017. Uh you, you've gone through, you know, surgery and rehabilitation. Uh, but most importantly, you are, you know, a young guy. Are you, are you still 23 or have you had a birthday yet? Nope, I'm still 23. I turned 24 <laughs> here in December. Well, soon to be happy birthday to you. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, I, I know we have two different heights. Uh, descriptions online. One place it says you're six three. Another place says that you're six five. What what is your height? Uh, I, I I'd put it at six four. They they put when they put your uh, information down mm -hmm. as a as a minor league baseball player, they don't update it very often. So I think five six years ago when I first came in, I was maybe six three, two hundred five pounds, but. Um, to say the least, I weighed in at 232 yesterday, so I don't think I'm 6'3 anymore. Um, I think, I think we're going to go with 6'4. Are you still growing? Height. I got, I, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I mean, as an athlete, you're always growing in different ways. Um, trying to grow your game and grow your body. I mean, your body's your, it's your money maker and it's your career. So, and, and since you're healing, um, you know, share if you would like to share but you you know you've you've surpassed um a lot of the um the transitions that you had gone through in your life um I, i'm gonna honestly say you're on the right path uh you are 
moving in the direction that you're meant to. And even with everything that you've gone through, and most importantly, you have emphasized and made it very well known that gratitude has played a huge part in your life. Would you like to share with us more about how you are embodying being grateful and what that is doing to lead you and moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. No, so I got... I was on top of the world back in 2017. I was a 18 year old who got drafted by the Seattle Mariners um, in the second round. And um, life was good. You know, there was, I, my life changed completely within a matter of days. Um, I was walking at high school graduation. A week later, I was playing professional baseball with um, Seattle across my chest. And the, the big change, like, came to a stop real quick when I started having elbow problems and for my whole life. And I'm sure if any athletes are out there listening, like that your sports kind of your identity um, and what you do on a daily basis completely revolves around your sport. Uh, you're trying to become the best player you can be. And a lot of times you can lose who you really are in this like journey um, through your sport um, and it's why you see a lot of guys um, when they're done playing have this sort of identity crisis where they they don't know what they're doing. Um, they're they don't have a game every night. They don't have practice every day. Um, and that that hit me real quick when I was 19 years old when I had Tommy John surgery, and I had to have my UCL replaced in my elbow. And it's a really common surgery these days. Um, but for me, it was different because I sat there and looked myself in the mirror and I said, who am I like without this game? And I really didn't know. Um, and it was, it was sort of that identity crisis at a earlier time than most people would experience, um, especially in professional sports. So um, now that I'm back playing and back healthy, I've played two seasons um, since then now. And um, it's, it's a long rehab process. It's it took me almost two years to recover um, fully, uh, it's, it's like a 16 month recovery. Um, and then I went straight into the off season, but, um, uh, yeah, it's playing the game when you get it taken away from you, just puts into it, puts it to a different perspective and you're just so grateful no matter like how well you do, um, no matter what people think of your performance, um, you're just, you're just every bit that more every bit more grateful um, because you get you get to go on the field and you get to have fun because you know what it's like to not be able to go on the field and not enjoy the feeling of playing the sport you love um, so that's kind of how I just got into this kind of mindset where you know nothing really matters except for like how you feel and who you are and what what you uh what you do on a daily basis to make yourself happy. Um, and I think it's taken the pressure off the game for me and it's allowed me to enjoy it even more. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I got from the, the mind of an athlete who's been through a, a major surgery at a really young age and kind of went from top of the world to rock bottom real quick and then had to dig myself out of it and um, get back to neutral and kind of figure out who I am again. When you say to figure out who you are again, what does that mean? Could you tell us a little bit more on that? Did you have a, with the Tommy John surgery and the ups and downs that have happened in your life, and you're, you're so very young, accomplished so much that would take people decades. Could you explain more? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what I mean by that is like, um, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to really, put into words that most people would understand um, if you haven't been in professional athletics. Um, like my, my job revolves around me throwing a baseball as hard and as well as I can. And everything I do from the second I step in my bed, that's a sleep athlete performance bed. Um, to the first thing I do in the morning is drink my athletic greens. Like, everything I do in my life revolves around baseball. And what I mean by figuring out who I am, like outside of the game is like, 
if 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 someone asks me like what 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 kind of my were my hobbies you know like i i really i don't know i just i went to school in high school and um, i just i just played baseball you know i didn't really have any hobbies like my whole life revolved around it like where are we going this weekend oh we're going to or i grew up in minnesota like we're flying to arizona for a baseball tournament i never really went on vacations as a kid you know um i never got to figure out really like what I liked. Did I, did I like going to the beach? I don't know. Cause I, I, all I did was spend my time on a pitcher's mound, you know? Um, so that's kind of what I mean by that. I, I got into, I started doing yoga when I was in rehab. Um, and that just gave me a lot of time for self-reflection. I started, I found out that I really enjoyed hiking. I went through phases where I really enjoyed reading. I'm not in that phase right now. Um, cause I'm doing some school stuff. So all of my reading is, um, for for a class versus um just for personal pleasure but stuff like that finding out that i i really like the sneaker community and the sneaker world and that's another thing that i really found myself enjoying and then just the overall like health fitness and wellness man i i wasn't able to play the game for a really long time but what i was able to do is um train my body in the gym and i found out just all the benefits that come along with that and like how much it can completely change somebody's life not only their physical um appearance what most people most people would go to the gym for but the mental um aspects that you can like you can really like make yourself a happier more grateful person um by getting in the gym and eating better food and just taking care of yourself um more than you probably knew you were capable of. So, um, yeah, it's just, I've, I've really been able to find out what I like, what I like doing in my free time. Um, and I had a lot of free time after surgery. So that's, that's, that's pretty much what, what it came down to. For those that are tuning in, we've got Sam Carlson. He is a professional baseball pitcher in the Seattle Mariners organization. Sure. Uh, you know, head on over to his Instagram. It is impressive. Sam Carlson, S A M C A R L S O N 33. Uh, let's, uh, digress just slightly back. If we can, Sam, the Tommy John surgery, and uh, just to let everyone know, I actually had to look this up cause I never heard of it. It says here, a surgical procedure in which a healthy tendon extracted from an arm or sometimes a leg is used to replace an arm's torn ligament. The healthy tendon is threaded through holes drilled into the bone above and below the elbow. Now, to hear this, I'm going to tell you, I have sensations going through my body, including my arms. It may be subjective or or so, <laughs> but, you know, with this, um, what I really appreciate about you, and as I said to you before we went live, you came by recommendation, and I, I really want to put a big shout out there to my friend Tom. Um I really appreciate the people that I know because they know exactly who I look for um, and and the, the quality and type of people to have as a guest on my show is, do you have any fears, um, you know, since post-surgery, Sam, or are you completely at peace? And before you answer, the reason why I'm asking that question is because you're more than larger than life. Your Instagram to, to do Google search you and to look you up, you've got an incredible personality, comical, light. I wouldn't even think for who you are on the field and what's out there. Man, you've got that kid at heart, and I love it. How are you in a place and space emotionally and mentally, Sam, to where you're confident that the surgery is effective? And you're able to move forward as though nothing has ever happened in your life of an, of having an injury. Yeah, no, absolutely. They, uh, I mean, the surgery is so common with baseball players now that the success rates are incredible. Um, I had mine back in 2018 and by 2020 I was healthy. Um, I played a season in 2021 and I played in 2022 as well. Um, so the elbows fully back. Um, but that's just the thing with being a professional athlete. Every time you step on the field, you're doing what you love. 
But at the same time, anything can happen at any moment. You can throw one pitch. You can make one wrong step. Bam. Career flashes before your eyes. And that was kind of the awakening that surgery brought to me. Um, I was a young kid on top of the world. And all of a sudden, my, my world, my whole sport, sports world came crashing down. Um, and you kind of you kind of just disappear and fade off when you're in these long rehabs. Um, it's similar to a football player or a basketball player turn their ACL or their Achilles tendon. Um, very similar, just different parts of the body, different kinds of, of rehab. Um, but during that time where I just was able to self-reflect, I just kind of was able to look back and look at myself in the mirror and be like, I'm more than just a baseball player. Um, and that's just kind of what I've tried to put out to the world and try to honestly, deep down, just try to impact other baseball players, other athletes, other people's lives and bring them into baseball, bring them into fitness and wellness and just show them like how much it can improve your life. Um, and just be able to touch as many people as I can, um, whether it's put a smile on their face or show them some cool stuff that I've tried out and that they might want to try out. And, um, yeah, that's just, I've, I've been able to make myself more than a baseball player. Um, even though I knew I was more than one my whole life, um, professional sports kind of puts you in this realm where, um, you go to your, you go to your holiday events with your family and the question you get is, Oh, how's baseball going? You know? It's not, it's not, Hey, how, how, how's life? How's life? How are you? How's, how's, uh, how's your headspace on a daily basis? Um, and that's, that's just kind of where I would rather have my life go in that kind of a direction, you know? Um, and I think a lot of athletes would attest to that. So that's, that's what I got, Steven. I would like to ask you, since you brought it up, how are you honestly, Sam? I'm great. <laughs> I'm great, man. I, uh, I lost my love for the game when I was away from away from it for so long when I was when I had surgery and um, I, I questioned would I ever play again um, and I was like I would do anything on this planet to not have had what happened to my elbow um, but now that I look back at it dude it might have been the might have been the best thing that ever happened to me um, it gave me perspective that I never would have gained um, without it and um, it's just kind of propelled me into being more like just have more more uh more impact and just be able to impact the world in more than just one specific way um but yeah i mean i'm good man i love the game i love life i love my family um i love meeting new people um doing things like this where i get to share my story and um be able to meet a great person like yourself and I believe, and I'm going to uh, remind you of something here. One of your posts, it's one of my favorite posts that you've done. On August 23rd, you're handing a baseball to a young, young kid. And you wrote, when this game goes from being your hobby one day to your job the next, it can become really easy to get caught up in thinking about the future and forgetting why you even started in the first place. The cool part about baseball is that the dream of playing in the big leagues one day is something that all players share when we are young. I remember vividly being around the same age as the kid in this picture, looking up at the older players like they had superpowers that I wanted to possess one day. Someday in the future, my hope is that he might be the one signing the baseball and giving a young player the hope he needs to keep on chasing after his dreams. Moments like these help me remember to why I started playing in the first place. Nobody is bigger than a game. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that was... Uh, that's That's one of the one of the favorite pictures that I've ever um, had taken of me playing baseball. And the crazy thing is I'm not even playing it. Um, I'm just the kids wearing number 33 and that's how he uh, introduced himself at first. He said, Hey, 33, um, look at my number. And I chose the number 33 
because my favorite number was three. But when I first started playing baseball, one of my teammates took number three. So I said, hey, if my favorite number is three, why don't I have two of them? So that's that's how I chose number 33. And then I started looking up to guys like Joe Ma- uh, Justin Morneau and Joe Maurer. And Justin Morneau was number 33. But um, getting to have a conversation with a young kid and having the perspective of this is this kid's world series like he he is on cloud nine right now so happy so nervous and i know this because i've been that kid before and i used to look up to players just like he did so of course i'm going to take five minutes out of my day to go sit there and talk to him and try to make his day better try to make his baseball life better try to give him the hope um to keep on pushing and keep on playing and find his love for the game and even if his love isn't for the game, find his love in life, you know? Um, so that's kind of the, the message that I'm trying to put out and the, the, uh, the vibe and the, the, just the good thoughts and good impact on um, not only young kids' lives, but just everybody, everybody in the world who cares about something and is passionate about something. I looked up the spiritual meaning of 33, and it says angel number 33 gives you the courage to live your life with enthusiasm with enthusiasm and optimism safe in the knowledge that you are well blessed loved and supported in all that you do live your life with joy passion and purpose as this will manifest your true desires and be prepared to expand your spiritual development and awareness do you have a thought about that about that yeah, I'm not I'm not too big into the the spiritual numbers and stuff like that. But I mean, I do firmly believe that like everything that kind of happens um, in life it happens for a reason, and that's why um, when I was 19 years old and first had Tommy John, I said, "Why? Why me? You know, why me? Um, why Why does this have to happen to me? Um, like my world came crashing down." Um, but then as I got older, I kind of just learned to accept things for the way that they happened um, and take them for what they were and just realize like it happened for a reason. And there's like, there's a bigger, there's a bigger plan in place. And um, it leaves me with no doubt that the reason I chose number 33, I mean, it's in all of my social handles. Um, I don't know why I haven't really thought too much into it, but when I picked it out, when I was a little kid, and had it as my number for every team that I could choose my number for. Um, I did it and it's, it's, it's stuck with me and rolled with me since. And it's, it's a part of, I mean, it's part of everything. It's part of my brand now. And what I hear, you know, even though you're not too uh, involved into the spiritual aspect of that, we know this for a fact, you are a person, you are a human being and you have a, purpose in life and you've got a, a, an incredible uh soul that is moving throughout this world and especially from that post uh, the way that kid looked up at you um that's why it's one of my favorite and from what you had shared is no matter how you consider it you chose 33 to be your your an identification a number that's connected to you and what you do as Sam Carlson Um, with that number and beyond that number, Sam, it's not going to identify you of being like, whoa, you know, hey, you know, Sam Carlson, 33. It's going to be the real message of the legacy that you are establishing and gifting and leaving for yourself and for your future. And most importantly, Sam, uh, for other people to learn from you. And that is why you're here. That's why you're going to remain in baseball for however long you choose to. And it goes back to when you had shared, you know, how, you know, Joe Maurer had influenced you greatly and why you made the statement that, you know, you want to win every World Series and play in every game. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, uh, this, this game has given me everything that I've, received in life all my relationships um all the all the finances all the all the happiness all the experiences um 
in as much as I know that, I know that there's so much more to this world than this game. Um, so I'm trying to just trying to make 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 the professional sports world seem a little bit more real for everybody. Um, you know, a lot of times you see these guys on TV, and it's like, do they actually like live on the same planet as me? You know, <laughs> like they're getting off of their their jets with their their bags going to their games and. Um, you're like, I can't even believe that's real. It's like, no, like the lives we live are real, man. Everyone's walking, ties their shoes the same way. Everyone's walking down the road the same way. Like it's, it's, it's just life and it's what you make of it. Are you honestly proud of yourself for what you've accomplished so far? I am, man. And I, I, I know that I've been put through the ringer and really tested and, um, I'm nowhere I'm proud, but I'm definitely not satisfied. Um, and I'm proud because I know the two most important, three most important people in my life, uh, my mom, my dad, my brother, they're proud of me. Um, and that's what makes me most happiest. Well, I'm going to honestly say I am as well. <laughs> and seriously, and I'm honored to know you. And I'm appreciative that, you know, you've been able to see something within this opportunity to connect with me as I, you know, do with you and uh, continue to see the value and, you know, to offer the fact that you've got so much more to tell us and you've got so much more to share. But most importantly, you know, going to your Instagram, you're enjoying life. And and it is just, it is, it's a privilege and, and really, really just so fun to to see and to observe and to wonder what you're going to post and what you're going to do next. Cause honestly, like I said, you're a six, four incredible, talented professional baseball player. And then there is so much more to you to where, you know, I can see you being the life of the party and, and that person that's listening and being a, a good ear for someone who needs to purge needs to, to have a friend in that moment. And that's how I see you. I appreciate it. No, that means a lot. It really does. What's next for you that you're ready for? What's next for me? Um, well, what's really next is I'm going to hit the gym here um, after this call. But in the uh, in the world in the world realm realm, um, our season just finished up. Um, our next season doesn't start. Spring training is not till March, um, and we're just. I've been kind of letting my body heal from the season. It's a lot. We play 132 games in a minor league season, and it's a lot on your body, man. By the end of it, you're, every joint's cracking. You're walking funny. Um, so I've been letting my body heal, just you know, exploring more things, meeting new people, um, starting the baseball training up soon again, getting ready for next season, and um, just kind of kind of seeing where life takes me, man, just enjoying it. Well, I hope to have the opportunity to witness your incredible talent live, um, you know, when you start playing again. And um, who would you like to give a shout out to? Who would I like, like to give a shout out to? Um, I'd, I'd like to give it. I mean, there's there's so many people. I don't think I could pick out one, but anybody who's ever believed in me um, and supported me, especially when I was down at my lowest and my lows, when I was uh 19 20 years old when um i didn't really know who i was and the game was taken away from me and i didn't believe in myself anymore um especially my parents man they were the they believed in me more than i believed in myself um so i guess that's who i'd like to give a shout out to they know who they are um my mom my dad my brother and my dog too so and you're sharing it forward sam doing what your family has gifted to you you're doing that already. I see it. I believe it. I hear it. And that's why you're here today. And, you know, whether you put much thought into what you do or don't do, you're going to continue to move forward at lightning speed, through healing, through perseverance, and through your own successes. I appreciate that. Once again, Sam Carlson, everyone, chew on or head on over to his uh, Instagram, Sam Carlson. 33 S-A-M-C-A-R-L-S-O-N-33. 
By the way, are you TikToking? I am TikToking. That's <laughs> that's what I, that's that's what I'm really known for, to be honest. Um, I'm one of the one of the few professional athletes who is active on TikTok. Um, and at first, it was something that was weird, but now, man, it's part of who I am, and I'm really proud of it because um, I. I've been able to connect with so many people um, and impact so many lives through it in a good way um, that I never thought was possible. It's a special app. Um, same handle on there. So give me a follow. I try to, I post on there a lot more than Instagram. So yeah, I, uh, I'm on it right now. This is my first time going to this and 803,000 followers and counting 10.3 million likes. That says a lot. Yeah, no, I I, uh, I I started it about two years ago. Was kind of just put, putting up baseball content of my bullpens. If, if you do some stalking and research at the bottom of my page, but I've kind of moved more into the just posting everyday content um, behind the scenes of what it's like being a professional athlete, at Seattle Mariners, and it's it's a it's a very unique job that people people think is just different so they they want to watch and they want to tune in and i like to i like to give the people what they what they ask for and give them these insights and try to make make it fun and have fun with it too at the same time you know i'm loving it and uh yeah congratulations on this once again sam carlson everyone with the seattle mariners and uh any upcoming projects anything we should know before we close out um i don't i don't i don't have any big projects in mind um <clears throat> we're i'm just <clears throat> the minor league life is so crazy, so hectic, and this is the first time I've had some stability in over seven months. Um, so I might take some, take a little vacation. I'm gonna go see the family soon. Um, but if there's any big projects in the works, I'll definitely let you know. Please do. And uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing you play live. I'll bring my camera too. I mean, I love getting behind the scenes content. If you want it, absolutely. <laughs> Sam Carlson. Sam Carlson, 33, TikTok, Instagram. Wow. Thank you again for being with us here. Live on air with Stephen Quilk on Power 98.5, Sam. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Check the check our schedule on power985.com of any upcoming shows, uh, anything at all that we're doing, events. I know uh, my good friend and client, Olympian Jamal Hill, uh, he's got a documentary that Anheuser-Busch is going to be filming uh, early next year. So we're looking forward to starting with Anheuser and Golden Road Brewery. Big shout out to Rory. And uh, the little mini uh, media tour that we're going to be um, going to be doing in Los Angeles, and uh, we'll have more details about that coming up. A new episode with Alicia Pazzoni, Resilient You, uh, should be airing this Saturday at 11 a.m. Catherine is coming back with Catherine and Company, and more. She just had her interview with uh, Bill Janice on Hey Girl. Uh, what else is going on? I believe we've got, uh, yeah, Sean Say, reality TV star. That's coming up October 6th at 12 p.m. Pacific. Uh, today, we had Sam Carlson. We've got Cody Mack coming up. We're going to be finalizing when he's going to be coming on as well. Uh, big shout out to uh, Eric Fellows, Jason Regusta, Oliver Trevina, Isaiah Campbell, and Fabian Arnold, all of our most recent guests. Once again, head on over to power985.com to check the schedule to find out when they will be um, air or airing uh, on our future lineup. Also, we are... Uh, highlighting all new content on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. So we are doing a fall-winter overhaul. So uh, supporting uh, upcoming and emerging artists, independent music artists, and more. So I believe we just uploaded 60 to 70 new amazing tracks uh, to the station's lineup. And uh, we've got a lot more coming up. So uh, we've got several hundred right now. And uh, we're going to have some more. So uh, tune in to Power 98.5 on the iOS Android app. Alexa, in your car, in your home, anywhere. Uh, take Power 98.5 Satellite with you. And please do enjoy the new music uh, that we are you know, having ready for you on rotation. 
Thank you again for being with us today. We enjoy you. Thank you for being part of the family. And don't forget, if you have any questions or any comments about this interview with Sam Carlson with the Seattle Mariners, head on over to Power 98.5 on power985.com. Click the bottom icon in the right-hand corner. Send us your comments, uh, your love, your suggestions, and anything else. Have a great day, everyone. Connect.